Hello, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we look at the Honda Monkey Bike after a year of ownership. Cue the intro. Well, this episode is going to be about the Honda Monkey Bike 125Z. Now, we've done some honest owner's reviews of this bike, but we've now had it for over a year. So it's time to revisit it, time to talk about all the things we've done. Is it even relevant now in 2021? Is it worth you even looking at buying one? Well, hopefully this episode is going to answer all of that. But do you know what? I've put this bike through so much in the time that we've owned it on the channel. There is so many videos that you can go back and check out. But a year later, is it a keeper? Would I buy the next version that will be out soon? Let's find out. Well, here we are on the helmet head Honda Monkey. And what I like when you switch this on is this little wink it does. I still like that to say it hasn't ever been annoying. I just like it because it's like the bike's going, I'm ready to go, mate. And you go, cool, let's get going. So let's fire up and let's talk about this bad boy. Now, what I'll say straight away about this bike is, is that it has been smile after smile after smile. If you're buying a Honda Monkey bike, you are buying it because you know it's going to be a giggle to ride, it's going to be a laugh. And the thing is, you don't take it seriously because it's small, it's unique, it's got a quirky thing to it. You take it on the point of buying it because it's a laugh. But it's amazing what you can do on these. It really is. That Honda build quality that you know is going to be an easy fix if there's any problems, massive access to it. The engines are everywhere. You can pick them up. They've put them in so many different bikes. You can change out if you need to. That is real peace of mind there. But anyway, let's talk about this bike. To ride, it really is a giggle. And I say that, I really mean it. It is a bike that feels so light. When you first ever get on one of these, you think, it doesn't feel right, it doesn't feel that stable. Because it's so light, if you've come from a bigger bike, you're like, oh, this feels odd. And once you get into it, you realise that it is so well planted, it's just super light and super easy to chuck around. It is a serious pleasure to jump on and have a ride on. Now, a lot of people have said about, you know, tyre change stuff. Now, I'm at 2,290. These tyres have still got loads of life on them. They don't put on some of the real kind of crap nasty ones you get when you buy a new bike so I think these are quite a unique size so they've put decent tyres on and there's plenty of life left in there and I still reckon I could easily get a load more out of it there's no panic at all whatsoever that it's uh, you know that they're rubbish it sticks to the road really well I've never felt like it's loose in any way like it's going to chuck me off I haven't and I have put this bike through some unbelievable trials. I have took it for a river where it's basically right up to the old air box on it. And it literally flew through there and that was really impressive. I've obviously done green laning, off-roading, I've ridden it on big adventures, traveling reasonably big miles on it. And do you know what? There is a chore when you sort of sit there at that kind of 55, 60 miles an hour on a dual carriageway thinking god this is going on forever but you do that on any bike i mean this really isn't a, a, a around the world adventure bike but any bike can be if you want it to be but it's not designed to be sat there at 70 it's a 125 you'll sit there normally around 60 miles an hour top end revving the pants off of it but it will sit there doing that all day and that makes a massive difference now, one of the cool things about the Honda Monkey bike is, is there is a ton of accessories. So the big black air box, I don't like this, a pain up the arse to service. You can change it. You can change that for a, a different style of airfield. There's loads of brands out there. Now, I did a really cheap job of buying bits and bobs to make it into a race bike because we have a sidekick and I wanted to beat him. So I bought myself this. So what I did to get rid of that big black box that's normally there is buy this. Now, this is probably one of the cheapest you could possibly get and it's off of 
with eBay and it's from Thailand and it took forever to come and it isn't really fit for purpose because it's missing the little hole and um, bracket that you need to put the air sensor on but I've hidden that out of the way and it's still perfectly fine and this is still on that's good but the plus side to changing it to this style obviously spend more money than I did is that you can change this filter literally by undoing this and then all you got to do is put a KNN or whatever you want on there and obviously it goes directly in and it does give it that little bit more power but it's just super easy to change in the future now the other side of it is is i put on this this beautiful exhaust this 10 she not 10 shit because it quite clearly is um this exhaust now this was 150 quid and to be quite honest you pay for what you get for the bracket that came with it didn't fit properly and it's had to be put on the way that it's been put on and then things like the um things like here to do with the baffle that's just hanging on there and wobbling around and making noise but that doesn't matter because now it goes quicker and it sounds like a moto gp bike So I want to take the opportunity as well to talk about comfort because obviously having this bike for a year and doing the kind of miles that I've done on it, what I am finding of it is, is that this seat, honestly, you don't need to change it. It is such a nice seat. I generally don't get the the horrible sort of bum ache that you get on a long trip that, to be honest, I get on my adventure bike. That seat is just absolutely lovely. Dead, dead comfortable. Now, the one thing i love is a standard bike i really do and when i did my upgrades to this i actually really did it for a reason because there is a sidekick to the channel and he'd won a load of races against his vespa and i was like no 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 i'm gonna race prep this bike so i can beat him and it has made a big performance difference now the standard by itself bike what i was finding as a man with big muscles and beautiful body that i've got here and not chubby in any way is that this bike would start losing speed and would get down to about 50 going up hills and obviously downhill you'd go quicker etc etc and i wanted a little bit more oomph out of this bike and the, obviously if you google or youtube search this you'll find that there is loads and loads of cool stuff you can do with this bike and of course the easiest one is to change the front sprocket i changed the back sprocket as well so it was one too flesh to give it a little bit more oomph and do you know what it's worked for me really really well i can get this bike now to currently hold about 70 miles an hour with the things i've done and they're the three sort of three things really so in a year of owning this what problems have i had with it because it has a few little issues when you get it standard and there's a few weak points on the honda monkey there really is and the only sort of two problems that I've got, and you can easily overcome them since I've had this bike, it's not had any engine problems or anything like that. What it's had is the chain that comes with it is just rubbish, and I've had to change that, and I changed that like within a thousand miles of having the bike. I put a heavy duty DID chain on it that was great, but when I changed the sprocket, it was too big. So since then, I'm trying to play with getting the right amount of. Uh, uh, links on a chain so it fits properly so i bought another one that i've put on now and it did just fit but there's not any room for adjustment so i'm now having to buy another chain that i've got ready to go on for a big adventure that's coming up on this bike but that's one thing i'd say is that the original chain that comes with it is not the best and the one thing i'd say as soon as you get it run it for the first thousand miles and get that chain change and get a proper did a proper one not one of these ones that say will tell you that it's did you know it is it's stamped on it it's got japan on it you'll know the brand you'll find it put a proper one on because it will last you so much longer so that's kind of floor one and then the other weak point about this bike since i've owned it is the battery they put on it. It's a really small battery and it has an alarm. And if you put your alarm on and leave it in your garage and come back to this bike, you know, two weeks later, and I mean a maximum of two, like two weeks later, your battery will be flat. Now, again, you can go out and buy a decent battery for this and you'll probably eliminate that problem and you'll all be good. But my biggest advice would be, as soon as you get this, make sure you have definitely picked yourself up a battery trickle charger a smart charger to keep this charged to keep this good because if you've picked up a smart charger something to keep this good then again you've eliminated that problem every time i get back on it it's full if i'm going away i'm using it every day so the battery stays full but big time you know 
get a smart charger on this keep your battery topped up keep it safe that's kind of my advice on that but that really is the only two things that i'd say from new this bike you know has issues with mechanically to me this engine has been 100 sound the maintenance on it is a piece of pee now it's a cartridge oil filter that's an absolute pain up the arse to change but other than that literally dropping the oil out and changing the oil and i do you're supposed to do the oil on these about every thousand miles i do it about every 600 to a thousand depending on what i'm doing so if i'm going on a big trip i'll just change the oil you can get the castor oil the recommended oil for this bike for like 12 quid it only takes a litre it's drain it out put it in fresh oil keep fresh oil in these engines and they will go all day long and that's definitely something you've got to keep on top of and just think oh but if you think you're changing a bigger bike you know you'll be putting on a good few litres in this it's only a litre 12 quid but a boom but a bing keep that engine sweet so maintenance on it is pretty easy to do with oil changes. You've got access to everything. The engine is quite wide open. So one of the other things I'd like to mention about the mirrors, well, so not people wouldn't care about them as much, but I do. Now, the mirrors itself, the standard ones on it, if you are obviously well muscly and gorgeous like myself and not chubby, then um, what you'll find is, is that you won't be able to see behind very well. The mirrors are too far in. That can be quite annoying. A lot of people don't really care about mirrors, but... For me, I like to see what's behind me. I like to see what's about to overtake me, especially on a smaller bike. Now, I was really lucky to be given by Phil and Wendy Rouse um, these mirror extensions. They're patrons, they're lovely. They came to Patreon meet and went, we've got something for you. So you can see the sidekick in the dust as you're flying off. I'm putting these on. The difference, I can see behind me properly on this bike for the first time. Now, they're well worth picking up again. You can get these on Amazon, eBay, anywhere like that. Well, the thing is, the monkey bike is just a lovely place to be. I really enjoy it. It is just, it's just cool. I mean, it makes you smile. You own one of these, you ride it, and you smile, and you can poodle along, or you can give it some more beans and let it pick up, and it sounds like a rocket ship with that crappy exhaust on, but it just sounds great and it's fun and people come and talk to you about it they're interested in it they want to go on one they're thinking about having one for a second bike you get all those kind of things all the time because it's just an awesome little machine what well, is so capable of so much more than what people think great around the city great to take down the green lanes awesome in the country and just a pleasure to own a year later i wouldn't change this for the world wouldn't change it for anything it is an awesome machine i suppose owning it a year later the big question is is do i regret buying the monkey bike at all and i really haven't in any way it has been it's an inspirational bike and it's an inspirational bike to ride because it's it looks so small but it, it gives so 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 much and it is really a go anywhere do anything bike that builds confidence and the thing is when they release basically the mark 3 monkey bike that's looking currently like 2022 do you know what i'm gonna buy it i'm gonna buy another brand new monkey bike because it's just one of those bikes that is just absolutely awesome and you're missing out until you get your hands on one and give one a proper go well we always save the best till last the montage so ladies and gentlemen i want to give you the best motorcycle in the world the honda monkey this might be right either you feel it or you don't might give it a try
there you go. And do you know what? The Honda Monkey Bike is obviously here to stay on the Helmet Head channel. But owning it for over a year, it has really proven to me that it's a small bike capable of absolutely massive adventures. I can't wait for the upcoming adventures. I'm well proud of the Monkey Bike for all the things that it's done. And I generally say, if you're looking for a bike that will just make you smile, be an absolute pleasure to own, the Honda Monkey Bike is definitely that bike. So that's pretty much it for this episode. I just want to say thank you so much for watching. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, please hit that now. And if you hit the bells button, you won't miss out on another episode. Before you do go, if you could leave a comment, like, and even share it on your social media, I'd really appreciate it. I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons. These guys are the people that help support this channel. If you're interested in getting your name in the credits, helping this channel, seeing the videos first, please click on the link for Patreon down in the description. As well as, of course, the Helmet Head merchandise shop where you can get your t-shirts, your mugs. By the way, that makes everything taste a million times better. Guaranteed proven, not guaranteed or proven, but it is really, really awesome. So please check that out as well. And then, you know, what else have I got to say? The three gospels of life, the three most important things. Eat pie, ride motorcycles, and be happy. I will see you in the next bonkers Helmet Head adventure. Bye-bye for now.